Hey, Fortnite fans, I'm Thomas Mott. New mock draft coming today in this video. Before we start, though, so close to 33,000 subscribers. Less than 200 away if you're brand new to the channel. Just do yourself a favor. Hit the big red subscribe button down below. We would greatly appreciate it. All right, you see the title of this video, and that means it is Mock Draft Season, meaning Mock Draft 2.0, my second mock draft here on the 49ers Report YouTube channel, as, of course, we are getting closer and closer. We are less than two months away from the April 27th, sorry, April 29th start date for the NFL Draft, and with 10 picks in this draft, most notably number 12 overall, the questions on what the 49ers can do with those picks have been, you know, the main talking points we've had here on this channel and on, obviously, all the other networks that you watch out there during your 49er fan week-to-week -week processes, and so as we get into this mock draft, I want to give uh, some interesting takes on what the Niners could do. Now, of course, I use a mock draft simulator, and so trades happen in front of us, and people get taken at different spots, and so it's hard to go ahead and adjust, but we do know the big needs are cornerback, defensive end, offensive lineman, safety, and wide receiver, and I try to do a pretty good job of getting all of those players and positions and needs all taken care of in this mock draft. I'm going to be honest. Last uh, last month's mock draft, I think, just a couple of weeks ago, I like that one better than this one. But this gives another example of what the Niners could expect to go ahead and look at and possibly get through all seven rounds of the NFL draft. As you see on your screen, you know we got a lot of draft picks. You got the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. I mean, a bunch of picks overall. That extra third round draft pick, by the way, for Robert Sala, really, really nice. And then, of course, fifth and fifth and sixth and seventh and seventh. I mean, they got so many picks. Ten picks overall, as you guys well know. And so we're going to jump in here using the uh, Pro Football Network mock draft draft simulator. I'm going to go pick by pick here to, and tell you guys who I took, why I took them, and who else was available on the board at the same time. Before we get going, though, pin comment down below. Who do you want at number 12? Right now, just, you know, just stay it out there. Who's your favorite player? Let me know who you guys want right, right now at number 12 down below. All right, let's jump into the first couple of picks here, starting in the first round of our mock NFL draft for the 49ers. And let's begin by showing you the picks that were taken previously up until the Niners were taking, or at least I for the Niners taking, at number 12. So, the previous five picks are on your screen. The Lions took Jalen Waddle at number 7. The Panthers took Zach Wilson at 8. The Broncos took Caleb Farley. The Cowboys took Rayshon Slater, the offensive lineman from Northwestern. And the Giants went ahead and took Micah Parsons at number 11 overall. That means... Yes, in this mock draft scenario, Patrick Sertan was available, and you know me, we love Patrick Sertan here, and then if he's available, I'm telling you, the Niners are going to run that pick up to the podium and draft him as quickly as possible, and that's where we went. Number 12 overall, Patrick Sertan. In my opinion, the best cornerback in this draft. There is some argument, whether it's J.C. Horn or Caleb Farley. Horn was available. Farley, as you saw, was not. I consider Patrick Sertan the best corner overall because he has great size, he has great length, and is the best press man cover corner that you can possibly find in this year's NFL draft. I expect him to go higher than 12, but there were a lot of quarterbacks that went early on, early on in this NFL draft, and so you can see a scenario like this one where he somehow falls to number 12, and if that were to happen, to me, best case scenario for San Francisco, I guarantee you, I feel very confident the Niners would go ahead and jump all over him as a possible draft pick. Now, why is he so important? Why cornerback at number 12? Well, you know the reason, right? The Niners need help at cornerback right now. They haven't signed anybody technically to be a cornerback because Jason Barrett and K1 Williams are still out there. Keller Witherspoon, like they have not signed anybody, even though we expect them to go ahead and bring back a couple of these free agents. But with that being said, I, regardless if they bring back Williams and Tart and even Akela Witherspoon, I still think, or sorry, Williams uh, uh, and Verrett and Akela Witherspoon, I still expect them to go ahead and draft a cornerback at some point in this draft. And I'm telling you, if Sertan is there at number 12, you take him. He is, if you put the film on, the best cover corner to come out of the NFL draft in a very long time, in my opinion. I think he's absolutely fantastic. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best wide receivers, not only every day in practice, but also in the SEC. And really, the film shows he was really good in every single scenario. The only wide receiver that really kind of got to him a little bit was Jamal. Jamar Chase, but of course, Jamar Chase is really, really good either way. So Sertan, number 12, I would be super pumped that this was going to be the case. I'm very excited to go ahead and take him uh, at 12 overall for our first pick in the first round of this mock draft. Okay, number uh, two, the second round draft pick. Here comes the controversy. I sat there at number 43, and I looked around, and I saw that a lot of players I like were already gone. The Bills had taken Najee Harris. The Jaguars took linebacker Jabril Cox. The Falcons took Tyson Campbell. Mac Jones was gone to the New York Jets there at 32. That's from a trade, because there were trades allowed in this mock draft. And Jalen Phillips was gone to the New York Giants. So, with the 43rd overall pick, and again, this can vary based on trades that happen, but the first second round draft pick that they have, the only second round draft pick they have, I went with Kyle Trask. I know. 
And producer Sam, you know, Bruce in this video hated the pick, and I understand it. But listen, this is me thinking, well, if they keep Garoppolo but don't really want to keep Garoppolo, maybe you draft the replacement for Jimmy Garoppolo and let him sit for a year. And if that's the case, Kyle Trask in the, se in the second round wouldn't be the worst pick. Honestly, this guy was in the running for the Heisman Trophy last year and played really, 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 really good football up until Oklahoma kind of made him look terrible. But, you know, it's just the Oklahoma defense, and that's just what happened in that bowl game overall. But the uh, accuracy, the leadership, and I think he has a lot of uh, chances to be a good quarterback in the NFL. NFL. This is a scenario where I would take Cal Trask, I would immediately sit him behind Garoppolo, let him learn the Cal Shanahan offense for an entire year, maybe even two years, and then eventually have him be the heir apparent to Jimmy G. Again, this is not the ideal scenario. This is not something that I would, <coughs> excuse me, would be thrilled about with the 49ers doing. It's like, I would rather get other different players or, you know, go ahead and just figure out the quarterback pre-NFO draft. But if they don't get anybody like a Deshaun Watson or a Sam Darnold and they're stuck with Jimmy Garoppolo but not fully sold on Garoppolo, they probably will take, take a quarterback at some point. And Trask was there. He would make the most sense at this point in the draft early on here in the second round. Again, he's not terrible. He threw 43 touchdowns last year. I mean, he was a Heisman Trophy frontrunner for a very, very long time until he kind of fell off the latter part of the season there at Florida. I think in the right system, and the right system is San Francisco, he could be a really good quarterback of the future. What do you guys think? Should the 49ers draft a quarterback in the 2021 NFL draft? This will be controversial. Why down below for yes and down below for no. I, I, I don't love this, and I'm going to get some bad comments, but he was there, and I'm assuming with this mock draft that they kept Jimmy Garoppolo, or maybe they didn't. They had to get a quarterback overall, but I went ahead and took Kyle Trask in the second round. Round. All right, the Robert Sala pick here, the third round of our mock draft. I went a different direction here. I went for a wide receiver. How about Tutu Atwell, the wide receiver from Ella, from uh, Louisiana, uh, excuse me, from, Louis, from Louisville. Now, do the Niners need a wide receiver in this draft? Technically, no. I feel pretty good about the current wide receiver depth chart. We'll show you that here in just a second. But we keep hearing that they will take a wide receiver. And so, with me thinking that they are going to do that, I went ahead and took Atwell because he was, one, available, and two, is the most explosive wide receiver in this draft. You pair him with Debo Samuel, you pair him with Brandon Ayuk, and the Niners have three extremely explosive wide receivers on that roster. He's a little small, five foot nine, buck 65, even about my frame. I mean, I'm not that big either. But he's expected to run like a 4 2 7, 4 2 5. 40. He's an absolute lightning bolt, and I think if you put him in this 49er offense, he would be extremely fun and extremely good. This is a pick that's like, the, the, the Niners can afford to take a wide receiver in the third round because even though they don't need a wide receiver, they don't have a bunch of other needs along different spots in their uh, uh, overall roster, and so you can just kind of get some uh, some toys here and get a toy here, I should say, in the third round, and Atwell to me would be too hard to pass up on. Again, we mentioned the wide receiver depth chart. You've seen that on, on your screen. Big question mark on Jalen Hurd. Is he going to be the wide receiver three? Will they re-sign Kendrick Bourne, Trent Taylor? I have no idea, but I do feel like this would be a really fun pick overall, and Kyle Shanahan could really do some good job not only getting Atwell in space, but using Atwell alongside the other two good young wide receivers that 49ers currently have on their roster. The guy is a speedster. The guy is a, like I said, lightning bolt, and... I think it'd be a lot of fun overall. So first three rounds, we went with a, a cornerback that I love. Went with a, with a quarterback that I'm kind of, eh, but, you know, I'm trying to explain why in case you're going to go and keep Jimmy Garoppolo. And then a really fun wide receiver. And so we're mixing it up here on this edition of the 49ers Report Mock Draft, which is honestly... Uh, to me, uh, just a fun thing to go ahead and do is figure out the mock draft stuff. So quick question. 49ers need a, another wide receiver. Type 1 down below for yes. Type 2 down below for no. I want to hear from you guys about this one down below. All right, let's move on here to round four. And again, this is where it gets tough whenever you're doing a mock draft because, listen, I do a lot of mock draft prep. I do a lot of draft prep overall. But even I don't know all the good players that are available, and so I'm trying to fill needs now. And I looked in the fourth round and took Patrick Jones, the defensive end, out of Pittsburgh. And I took him because he not only is a two-year starter, but he has a, <laughs> a lot of experience overall at the defensive end position. And with Kerry Hyder Jr. not necessarily being guaranteed to come back and D. Ford always being up in the air, the Niners need some depth at the pass rush position. And Jones is one of the more explosive defensive ends off of the line. You look at 40 games in his career at Pittsburgh, 21 and a half sacks, five forced fumbles. This is a veteran guy who will roll in there and not be overwhelmed by, you know, the, the star-studded lineup on offensive line in terms of playing in the National Football League. And as I said, Solomon Thomas is a free agent. Kerry Hyder is a free agent. DJ Jones, Ronald Blair. I mean, almost everybody on the defensive line is a free agent. With Nick Bosa coming back, they might want someone to go ahead and fill the gap opposite of him, who's a lot cheaper on a rookie deal. I'd be very, very excited about Patrick Jones joining the uh, the squad there on the front four and possibly being a D end of the future. All right, let's move on here. Next pick here. I wanted to get a safety, and there's some good cover safeties in, uh, in the draft this year. I took Sherwood, the safety out of Auburn, who didn't have a 
crazy good career at Auburn. Like, this is clearly not going to be someone you take in the first three rounds, but he does have great size. He has great cover abilities, can cover those linebackers, which you need to do in the National Football League, and as a physical run defender in the box. With the ability that they, where the 49ers might not be, uh, not, might not, uh, Excuse me, the 49ers not resigning Jaquiski Tart. At least it seems like they're not going to go ahead and resign Jaquiski Tart. They need to go ahead and add depth at the safety position. And Sherwood, to me, makes a lot of sense overall because he played in the SEC and he played in a, uh, a, a the, the, the conference that gives him some very good player comp in the National Football League, as we always talk about here in the SEC. Okay, I did my first mock draft. Again, you see that picture on your screen right now. And so be sure to go ahead and check that one out because we, of course, I thought I did a pretty good job on the first mock draft. And you guys really enjoyed that as well. We also did a, uh, a news and rumor video yesterday. I talked about Jimmy Garoppolo and Stefan Gilmore. If you missed that one, go ahead and check that one out. And then, of course, we do live Q&A shows every Thursday night, and so there's one coming up here as well. And so, that all being said, make sure you guys are subscribed to Fully Nourish Report because we do tons of not only draft news, draft rumors, mock drafts you see right now, and then live Q&A, free agency talk, and more. It's all here in the Fully Nourish Report. Help us get to 33,000 subs here, uh, hopefully by the end of the week. All right, in the fifth round, it gets it's really tough here. Shaka Tony. You probably don't, don't recognize the name, but to me, he's one of the better later round draft picks in the NFL draft, the defensive end out of Penn State. He's a rota rotational guy who will come in and provide instant depth. I know we already took a pass rusher just a couple of rounds ago, but depth at the DN spot, like I said, especially with all the guys who potentially could go ahead and be free agents, to me, make a lot of sense in terms of uh, bringing in an, 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 an additional possible diamond in the rough on these later rounds. Well, it's what we're searching for in the 49ers report, right? Later round draft picks, date three picks. They're trying to find diamonds in the rough, and I think Tony could be a uh, legit depth guy who potentially could become a starter for the 49ers. Only played eight games in 2020, but did have five sacks at Penn State, which was a terrible football team overall this year. But still, he to me would make a lot of sense in the later rounds here. I could see him even being a sixth round draft pick, but Tony was available. I took him there uh, on day three. All right, getting into big time, you know, diamond hunter territory here is we've got four picks to go. And I think the Niners are going to trade some of these picks too, but of course didn't happen uh, during this mock draft. How about Jalen Moore, the offensive tackle out of Western Michigan? To me, a real diamond in the rough because he's a three-year starter at Western Michigan, anchored that offensive line and was a very legit uh, offensive lineman for his entire three years at Western Michigan. He can play tackle on the outside, can also move into guard and provide some flexibility to a 49er uh, offensive line that may or may not be with Trent Williams and may or may not be having needs on the offensive of lines, uh, should be uh, standpoint. They run a zone blocking scheme in Western Michigan, or zone run scheme, I should say, run blocking scheme, the same type of scheme that, of course, the 49ers run currently in the Kyle Shanahan system, and so it would make a lot of sense to bring him in here as a later round draft pick to possibly add some depth for a position that might have a need if Trent Williams leaves, and of course, you see all the other unrestricted free agents that are out there, Compton, uh, Bergstrom, a lot of these guys are going to walk in for agency, and Trent Williams is the big one there, and if he leaves, then obviously you need to go ahead and bring in some depth, whether you draft somebody early on or get somebody later, but Moore is a guy who probably is going to go a little higher than the round that we took him just because he was a solid starter at a smaller school and sometimes those are kind of the diamonds that we look for in the later rounds of the NFL draft okay name a prospect you guys think I should watch some more film on because obviously I can't watch film on everybody I'm trying to and obviously I looked at everything that happened in this mock draft but if you have a prospect you really like that I have not mentioned yet name him and I'll go ahead and look him up and probably talk about him in a later video all right, final couple of picks here. We'll go through this one, these ones pretty quickly. Cornell Powell, the wide receiver out of Clemson, is a later round diamond, in my opinion, because even though the college stats aren't great, and from 2016 to 2019, he never really caught a pass over 15 yards, very much overshadowed by other Clemson receivers to come out and are coming out in this year's NFL draft, but he played really well in 2020. And the only reason why he keeps getting mocked to day three is because he has a limited sample size, which, like, I guess I get, but a solid frame. He has great speed and had a really, really good 2020. As you see on your screen right now, seven times. Touchdowns, almost 1,000 yards. That Clemson offense led by Trevor Lawrence was rolling over the majority of players that are teams that they played, and Powell was a big part of that. He keeps being mocked in the later rounds. I think it would be more of a fifth or sixth round pick, but he was there in the seventh. Went ahead and jumped on him here uh, with one of the later round picks that we currently have. Okay, um, let's keep going here. This is the next one, our second to last pick. I went with Jordan Scott, even the tackle out of Oregon. Again, this is what you do in, this, in the later rounds. You find people who were legit starters who played a lot of snaps like uh, Scott did at Oregon. He started 37 of the last 38 games at Oregon and became a two-time Pac-12 All-Conference honorable mention. And you just insert him into the lineup and either he sinks or he swims, right? He's either a guy who can make the uh, final roster and is good for depth, the defense tackle spot that doesn't really need depth, but later rounds, so we can kind of nitpicky here. Or he just kind of becomes a practice squad guy and you know, flames out of the National Football League. So the numbers aren't necessarily eye-popping, but he 
played over a thousand snaps and was widely considered one of the best defensive tackles in the entire Pac-12 the past couple of years. I grabbed him here with our second to last pick in this draft. And that leads us into our final pick, and this is going to be, I mean, the one that you really go, is this guy going to be good or not? How about Trey Norwood, the cornerback out of Oklahoma? He seemed to be a guy who would have been drafted a lot sooner in the NFL draft had he not had a torn ACL in 2019. Uh, he bounced back well, though, and of course, he's best suited for the nickel spot, which might be a big need for the 49ers if K1 Williams actually leaves in the 2021 uh, NFL free agency. He did lead the Sooners with five picks last year. He's a ball-hawking type of corner, and I think he could add some good depth again to a cornerback spot that has question marks, as we talked about earlier, even with Patrick Sertan being taken. And in this mock draft, you need somebody to fill the nickel spot, especially if another team offers K1 Williams just a little bit more money than what the Niners can go ahead and offer. All right, there you go. Ten picks. It's tough. Tony, try, you try and do a mock draft with ten picks, especially ones in the later rounds, because you got to find names that you guys will recognize and educate you on the names you don't recognize. And so we'll go ahead and review what I did. Sertan in the first round, Trask in the second round, Tutu Atwell, my first three picks. Interesting stuff there. I'm going to be curious what you guys think about that overall. Patrick Jones in the fourth, and then Jamie and Sherwood throwing in there. Um, uh, later on is our fifth pick overall. And then the final guy, Shaka Tony, Jalen Moore, Cornell Powell, the wide receiver, Jordan Scott, and Trey Norwood to round out my 10 picks here in this mock draft. What do you think? Right? I mean, hey, I, <laughs> it's tough to do, but I, I feel pretty good about this mock draft. I know the Kyle Trask is going to get uh, a, a lot of hate, but I'm curious if you guys think about it overall. Give me a grade on this mock draft, A, B, C, D, or F. I want to see what you guys think down below right now in the comments section. As always, make sure you guys do subscribe as we go ahead and end this video as we are so close to 33,000 subs. I'm going to keep reminding you until we get to 33,000 subs to so go ahead and click the bigger subscribe button down below and click the notification bell. That's all we have for today here on the 49ers Report. Another mock draft in the books. We'll do more in the future. For Chat Sports, I'm Thomas Mott signing off for the rest of your day.